No, there was a no, vulnerability still, in how they yeah, prevented people from ra- accessing it. <laughs> huge um, vulnerability. And since we're on the topic, the only reason I think it's quite quite important with this is that on one hand, they're forcing you to log in so they can collect all your data with a Facebook account. But on the other, ha- other hand, they can't even make sure that your freaking Facebook account is secure. It's ridiculous. Yeah. To use an Oculus, you have to go, here's yeah. my date of birth, here's my f- full real name. You can't put a fake name there because they do shut down people's accounts. It's pretty nuts. I've known people who have got their accounts shut down, personal people. So mm. it's insane. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to our, our next story. So this is a bit of a, a left field one and refers back to when I was talking about like games being a bit art as well. And I think this one definitely qualifies for that. So I don't, did you want to take this away, Swinney, or... No, I'll let you take it away. <laughs> okay, sorry. No, um, I know I know it, but it just seems like it's more your this is you're speed. the one that kind of picked up on this. And, well, yeah. I just I I thought it was I, I just love these kind of almost like experimental art accidents or because I don't think it was necessarily intended. Just to give the framing of it, uh there's a lot of game uh, game jams, which are really really cool. I actually look forward to like participating in game jams in the future. I was thinking about taking some time off to do one, but it'd have to be probably, you know, further years down the track. But essentially the whole idea is you have 24 or typically 48 hours to come up with the whole game and like basically finish it. And you'll get the theme of the game jam typically on the day of the game jam or just a few hours before. Uh, The biggest one is the Game Maker Toolkit. Uh, it's from Mark Brown, the really great uh, game design channel on YouTube. It is like insane how big that has grown. And they Such use, a good channel though. Yeah. Love it. And they use yeah. itch.io and he crashed itch.io <laughs> last year because of the demand for that game jam. So that's coming up in a month and a half. Um, so we'll talk about it when it gets closer. But this game jam was about games that shouldn't exist so games that you shouldn't make. So these are games that shouldn't be games, <laughs> right? And it was um, intended to be like you release it on the 1st of April as a bit of an April Fool's joke and you get bonus points if the game is unplayable within the first 24 hours, <laughs> right? So uh, this developer, and it's, it's hard to say his name, it's like D-R-O-Q-E-N, so Droken. Droken? Droken? Yeah. Droken. Droken. The idea that, that he had was basically to create a globally persistent world that you can enter into. So it's all network based and you hack these terminals and you can get access to further terminals. The more people that hack the terminals mean you're not going to be able to access because every other person who hacks a terminal, it's like an exponential increase in terms of how long it's going to take the next person to hack it. Well, I think you should clarify it's, it's a also a very difficult platformer. So that's why those, Terminals are so important because they're checkpoints. They're checkpoints. And yeah, there's mm. checkpoints and save points. And he, he basically said all the conditions are up for, you know, someone to come in and go, oh, I'm going to take advantage and like take all these checkpoints and make it really difficult for everyone else. And then the game's going to be horrible and, you know, unplayable within. Like he actually was documenting it on Twitter as it was going live. He, he actually thought it might be, you know, a few hours and then the game would, you know, be <laughs> over. And there were like events where people like actually hacked the actual game and then he had to restore a backup and all this other stuff. But what ended up happening was there were almost like from a grassroots perspective, a little community of people who banded together to actually create like a safe environment in the game and try to create like a, a safe area for people to actually exist in the game and cooperate. So you had this like awesome thing where he he sort of was like almost, you know, I guess like a a cynical kind of perspective on life and thinking, oh, people are going to just destroy this world, but ended up, you know, creating it and trying to save it. Um, And the game's still live right now. You can still buy it for like $6.66. I'm sure that's not an accident, uh, US dollars. Um, So it's still playable and it's still alive. So I don't know. I just thought it was a really, really cool article. Um, Was there anything else that I missed uh, there, Swinny? Well, that's the thing is, did you actually mention the article? I don't... Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've actually uh, mentioned another article from this uh, author. So this is from Vice, uh, Patrick Klebit. Klebit? Klebit. 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 Yeah. Yeah, no, really good author. Like, I actually went through some of the other articles way before. So we covered um, one from Nia. 
the really famed Super oh. Nintendo emulator writer um, and translator as well. So he wrote that article. That was really, really cool. It has really cool, unique stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and you, actually, if you go through all of his articles on Vice, he has a lot of really cool takes on different things. Just like small little stories. Like, this game is not a big game. Even with the sales, I think it was like a couple of hundred sales of this game. Um, but just, I don't know, really, really cool. And I love stuff around this that exposes the medium to just things that you couldn't do in film or comics or anything uh-huh. else. Like, this, is, this could only be done in video games, which is, I think, a really cool thing. I just want to quote the the game maker. So this time I will just read off what, what I read. And um, he said, I believe it's a he. Apologies. If it's yeah, not. it's a he. Um, I have a more positive and positive in quotes uh, view of what people are capable of enduring now. But I don't know if that's a good thing. People <laughs> can get used to and even find joy, beauty and solace in just about anything. On one hand, this is admirable and quite beautiful. But maybe it means as the end of the world draws near, instead of fighting to stop it, maybe everyone will just endure it. And I found that really, really interesting and really cool for him to say that um, because human beings are extremely resilient. That's that's the one thing about us that that is absolutely incredible. But the problem is it's a double-edged sword because our resilience is also a means for us to become quite complacent and just accept shit that we shouldn't be accepting. Mm. And... And I think I think it is down to that. I mean, you, you know, if I don't want to get into into sort of a depressing train of thought, but if you look at global warming, if or, or if you look at how we destroy the environment, we're just going to keep doing it. And even if it means that the whole world will just be an absolutely shit place to live in, the species will continue, and we will mm. just keep enduring it, forgetting that there's there's better options out there. You know, we can do much better than that. Humanity can actually be in a much better position if we didn't just accept all the crap um that that's that's coming to us so i thought i thought his his from 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 a philosophical perspective it was really cool and i think the way he phrased that as well was was awesome that that is very appreciated mike thunberg <laughs> hey don't speak mike swinney what do you reckon the chances that mike read the article i should what do you mean i he did, he did read I did the article. read the article. Oh, okay. Because yeah. <laughs> I thought you would have been really like uh, amped up about the whole fact that a big part of where the game came from was oh, I know where this is going. the discussion around cryptocurrency and the environment. No, no, impact. I read that too. I read that too. Yeah, oh, yeah, know, but no, it's just something was, that you should get him started. Too, yeah. Why don't you bring it up? Do not get me. No, no. I want, <laughs> I, I don't, because I, I don't thought he didn't read the no, article because no, the fact that he didn't mention it. I read it. I'm not going to derail this discussion. I actually thought the really cool part But it's interesting that it kind of came 